This is the biggest question for Miami Dolphins now. Could Miami trade Xavier Howard and draft a top-rated cornerback? Potential Dolphins Draft Target Kyle Pitts called, Gold Jacket Talent, by NFL.com. Let's find out. Could Miami trade Xavier Howard and draft a top-rated cornerback? This is the answer. Why would the Miami Dolphins trade Xavier Howard, unless he requests one? How would trading him away be a smart strategy for team building, unless the Pro Bowl cornerback no longer wanted to be part of this organization for whatever reason? Where could Miami land the biggest asset, whether it be a player or a draft pick, for the cornerback who produced an NFL leading 11 turnovers, 10 interceptions and one forced fumble, last season? Who could the Dolphins get in exchange for the 2020 Defensive Player of the Year candidate? And what kind of message would moving Howard send to the locker room and South Florida? Those questions have to be answered before a deal that sends Howard elsewhere makes sense. Unless we're talking about the Dolphins sending Howard to Cleveland for receiver Odell Beckham, or another upper echelon player, moving him before we see if he can recreate his 2020 magic in 2021 is dumb. Howard produced individual season a Dolphins player had delivered since Jason Taylor's Defensive Player of the Year campaign in 2006, and yet the fanbase is still talking about trading him? Plenty of the whispers regarding Howard centers around his discomfort with his contract, which pays him $12.1 million this season, which is the final year of the guaranteed option of the contract. New deals the past two years have dwarfed the six-year, $77.2 million contract extension Howard signed in 2019, and the Dolphins actually did one of those deals, giving his teammate Byron Jones a five-year deal worth $82.5 million. Jones will earn $14 million this season, and the Dolphins will pay him $40 million over the course of the 2020 and 2021 seasons. For comparison's sake, Howard will earn $24 million during those same seasons. That chasm-sized gap is clearly the issue causing tension between the player and the team. Don't understand? Well, look where it can reach you. If someone at your job was getting paid $16 million more than you to do the exact same job, and the boss was sending all the difficult assignments your way like they do Howard, you'd probably be pissed off too. The Dolphins need to figure out a way to get Howard to buy in, and the only way I see that happens is to restructure his contract, improving the terms, adding incentives, and guaranteeing new money, otherwise this is headed to a pretty nasty divorce. The Dolphins probably want to play the waiting game, but if Howard continues to play at the level we saw in 2020 it's going to be difficult to get the appropriate compensation for him. Miami can trade him for another disgruntled pro bowler, like Beckham, our aged Denver Broncos pass rusher Von Miller. That's what NFL teams usually do when placed in these uncomfortable situations. But when doing this you inherit someone else's problem child, and the Robert Quinn experience should have taught us that's not always ideal. Miami can trade Howard for a draft pick, but it is a stretch to think they'd get an early first round pick for him. And even if they could trade Howard for an early first round pick, do we really think the Dolphins will land another Pro Bowl talent with the pick acquired? Miami traded Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills to Houston and got back cornerback Noah Igbenogany, a fourth-round pick they traded, and the number three pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Miami trade Minka Fitzpatrick to the Steelers in 2019 and got back left tackle Austin Jackson, the number 18 pick in the 2020 Draft. My point is, the compensation gained and the player acquired with it doesn't always match the talent shipped. Say Dallas which is in the market for a cornerback upgrade, wanted Howard, and agreed to send Miami the 10th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, are we certain that whoever Miami could select, Alabama's Patrick Sertain Jr. or South Carolina's J.C. Horn, would contribute as much to the team as Howard can in the next three seasons if he can stay healthy? And if Howard left Miami are we certain that the Dolphins would remain a top-five defense in 2021? That's what complicates this pickle, and in my opinion the juice of a Howard trade isn't worth the squeeze. That's why it would benefit the Dolphins' decision-makers and penny-pinchers to find a way to make things right with Howard and his camp now before irreparable harm is Potential Dolphins draft target called, Gold Jacket Talent, by NFL.com The biggest argument skeptics of the Miami Dolphins drafting Florida Tay Kyle Pitts can frame stems from the presence of one hybrid tight end already on the Miami Dolphins roster, Mike Jasicki. 
And while there's understandable support for Jasicki throughout the Dolphins fanbase, there's also little doubt that he could coexist in Miami's offense alongside Pitts, a rare physical talent who is considered to be on the shortlist of targets for the Dolphins with the number 6 overall pick. Perhaps the biggest question about the reality of drafting Pitts is if he'll even make it to the number 6 overall pick. The Atlanta Falcons, looming at number 4 overall, stand as a significant roadblock to the Gators' pass catcher falling to Miami after the team decided to trade down from the number 3 overall pick. But should he be there, at least one NFL.com analyst is ready to say that Miami would be aligned to draft the best player in this year's draft at number 6 overall, at number 6 overall. Bucky Brooks went on to say that Pitts has gold jacket talent and has the combination of traits that should make him the top prospect on every draft board in the league. Brooks makes a strong case for Pitts to be drafted as early as possible, which means if he's there for the Dolphins the decision could, and should, be a no-brainer. I would ask you to view Pitts as a truly rare talent on par with the likes of Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones and AJ Green in their respective primes, that trio's instant success can be attributed to superior physical tools and refined skills. Johnson, Jones and Green dwarfed most defensive backs while also possessing the speed and burst to run past cover men on vertical routes. Also, they all displayed exceptional hand-eye coordination and ball skills to win 50-50 balls down the field, making it impossible to defend them on the island. As I studied Pitts, I saw similar attributes in the 20-year-old pass catcher. He overwhelms def defenders on the perimeter with his size, speed and athleticism. Pitts runs routes like a wide receiver, but he utilizes his NBA power forward like frame to bully safeties and cornerbacks in space. He renders them helpless in one-on-one -on -one matchups, and defensive coordinators are forced to adopt radical tactics to slow him down, particularly in the red zone. Bucky Brooks, NFL.com quarterbacks are expected to come off the board with the first three selections at the end of the month. Atlanta stands as the biggest barrier to Miami seeing Pitts on the board for them at number 6, as the Cincinnati Bengals are expected to draft either W.R. Jamar Chase or O.T. Penne Sewell with their pick at number 5. Atlanta could opt to draft a quarterback themselves, too, although it is worth noting that no draft has ever seen quarterbacks come off the board with each of the first four selections. But as the saying goes, there's a first time for everything. And if this is the year, Miami's decision should be quite straight. Draft good players and let the rest of the details sort themselves out afterwards.